Hey everyone, in this video ChatGPT is going to teach us topology and open sets. Topology is the study of spaces and the properties they possess without reference to any particular coordinate system or the metric properties of distance. Open sets are central to topology. Let's consider the real line R. An open interval AB is a basic example of an open set in R. A set U, that's a subset of R, is open if for every X in U there exists a positive number epsilon which might depend on x such that the interval x minus epsilon comma x plus epsilon is contained within u. New questions, is the set 2, 5 an open set? So the answer is yes, but let's prove it. Let x be in this set. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna split the interval in half and depending on where x is, we're gonna select the interval x minus epsilon comma x plus epsilon depending on which side of this interval we're on. If we're on the left side, then we're going to need to put the interval so that the left side of the interval doesn't cross the number two. And if we're on the right side, then we need to choose an interval so that the rightmost endpoint doesn't exceed five. So my case one is X is greater than or equal to 3.5. Then what we're going to do is we're going to ensure that the rightmost interval doesn't exceed five. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to pick this number X plus epsilon to be the midpoint between x and five, which is gonna be x plus five all over two. So now we can solve for epsilon to get x plus five over two all minus x, which can be simplified as five minus x over two. So we're gonna let epsilon be five minus x over two. So we can start with the left side of the open interval, x minus epsilon. This one is gonna be easy because we just have to show that it's greater than two. Since we know what epsilon is in this case, we can substitute epsilon with five minus x over two, and then we can simplify this to be three x minus five all over two. And since x is greater than or equal to 3.5, this is greater than or equal to what we get when we plug in x equals 3.5, which is 2.75, which is greater than two. That proves that the left side of the interval is greater than two. Next, we need to show that the right side of the interval is less than five. So we'll also substitute epsilon equals five minus x over two, and then we'll simplify, which is x plus five over two. Now, since x is less than five, given that x is in this interval two comma five, then that means we can say that x plus five over two is less than five plus five over two which is 10 over two, which equals five. So this shows that the interval X minus epsilon comma X plus epsilon is contained in two comma five. Next for case two, we get to assume that X is less than 3.5. And now we're on the left side of the interval. Then we're gonna let epsilon be the distance between two and X all over two. So that X minus epsilon is gonna sit in the middle between X and two. And so we're gonna let epsilon be the distance from two to X, which is X minus two since X is bigger than two. And then we have to divide that distance by two. Next, we can show that X minus epsilon is bigger than two by plugging epsilon in. And we can simplify as X plus two over two. And since X is bigger than two, then X plus two over two is also bigger than two. So that means X minus epsilon is bigger than two, which is what we wanted to show. The next thing we need to show is that the right part of the interval is less than five. We can substitute X minus two over two into epsilon to rewrite this expression as three X minus two over two. Now, since X is less than 3.5, then three X minus two all divided by two is less than what we get when we plug in 3.5 into X, which is 9.5 divided by two, and that is less than five. So in both cases, for case one and case two, we arrive at the same conclusion. And so that finishes the proof. Next, consider U, which is all the numbers such that X squared is less than four. Is U an open set? The answer is yes, because the interval u is just from negative two to positive two. And we could say that the proof is pretty much the same exact proof as we did for number one, but instead of two and five, we would be using the numbers negative two and positive two. Next, let's look at our next topics so that we can pick what we wanna do next. Number one is closed sets and their relationships with open sets. 
the concept of compactness in topology, bases for topologies, and limit points and boundary points. I guess next I want to do either three or four. So up next we'll do bases for topologies. I have no idea what those are. I remember learning about them once in topology and then I forgot within one semester. Let's see how ChatGPT responds. Great job. You correctly proved that the given sets are open. Your understanding of the definition of open sets and the correct application of epsilon delta argument shows a solid understanding of this concept in topology. Uh, it's kind of weird that they said an application of the epsilon delta argument considering I'm not really using a delta. Um, I'm just using an epsilon argument. That's a little weird to say, but maybe I'm dumb. I don't know. Feedback says your proofs are correct. You successfully showed that every point in the sets can be surrounded by an open interval that lies entirely within the set, which is the definition of an open set. Progress. You've started on topology and have successfully demonstrated a solid understanding of open sets. This foundation will be crucial as we dive deeper into more complex concepts in topology. Up next, we're doing bases for topology. This stuff looks very intimidating. Thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video.